Hey everybody, I have another great tarot deck to show you today. It is the White Sage Tarot by Teresa Hutch. It has been out for a couple of years now and it is uh, produced by US Games, so it is a mass market deck. Although by a, Teresa is a small independent artist, but she does release through US Games. So as you can see, it is in a tin. It is nice and small. So I personally, I love in a tin decks because one, they the tin protects them. I can throw this in a bag and bring it to an event that I'm reading at, and I know that the cards won't get banged up in my bag. And two, they're small. And as I've said before, I have small hands, and small cards are definitely uh, a plus for me. So, um, yeah, so nice tin. It's the same exact size as all the other in a tin decks that US Games puts out. Um, like I have the uh, the Smithwaite Centennial here, it's the same size. So inside there is a 64 page black and white book. It's a pretty standard little white book. There are meanings for uprights and reversals for each of the cards and the one additional bit of information that has been added in this book is a chakra um, that the author has associated with each of the cards. And so that actually brings me that there are two extra cards in this deck. One of them shows um, these seven chakras, and the other one has, uh, this is the chakra energy rainbow spread, so it's an idea for a tarot spread uh, based on the seven chakras. And these are the seven chakras that are most used in Western yoga practice. In Eastern practices, there are different systems with different numbers of chakras, but these seven chakras are the most common in Western practice. So let's look at the cards. Like I said, they are, they are small. They are the, the small in a tin size. The first thing I notice is that the backs are very good for if you read reversals. They are exactly the same both ways. And even, I'll put a blow up of this over here, um, they've even produced the, the copyright is listed twice in each corner. So uh, sometimes in decks it's like the, the design looks exactly the same, but there's a copyright in one corner so you know which card is reversed because of the copyright. They've actually printed the copyright in both corners um, to get around that. So that's, it's interesting. Um, it's a very plain basket weave pattern. Uh, in the same kind of watercolor gouache style as the rest of the cards. So, yeah, you can see the fool here is just the little dog running with a flower. A lot of these cards have really been, they're, it's a very minimalist deck. Teresa Hutch is from Minneapolis. She is a illustrator and a graphic designer, and the thinking behind this deck is that it's a very minimalist deck. The major cards are all animals and the minors are, um, I'll show you one here, let's just break it here. So here's the Six of Cups and it's just, it's very simplistic and there are, um, there are chakra colors in the backgrounds that she has, she has chosen for meanings. Um, so, right, so the fool, like I said, it's very, it's simplified, it's just the dog with the flower, actually it's the dog with the stick, dog with the stick, I thought it had a flower at first, but no, it's just a little stick. Um, the magician is just a feather and an eye, the high priestess is this cat, um, the empress is a seal, um, I think it's a seal, yeah, uh, the emperor is a walrus, so, you know, they're all... I'll do a flip through at the end, but they're all you know cute little animals for the deck. So I think one thing about this deck is that it's going to be um, it's really good for people who don't want humans in their cards because there aren't any humans in this deck at all. So if you are um, if you're looking for something that goes beyond humans because for representation or reasons or just because you like animals, this card doesn't have any people in it. It's just all animals. The um, show you the miners here. So for the miners, the wands are the pus pussy willow branches. And um, you can see that they're pretty minimal. They have a, 
they're like one step up from just being a pip card. Um, but they're pretty much just, you know, this is the Four of Wands, and it does have a nod back to the Four of Wands in the Rider Waite system, but it's it's pretty minimalistic. For the Wands, the royalty cards are all these um, hawk or kestrel-like creatures, uh, these kestrel-like birds. For cups, we have these coffee cups, so Ace of Cups is a latte. Again, you know, this is the Two of Cups, and it has the, the colors, like, commingling, and again, this is, like I said, she uses a lot of chakra colors, so green is a heart chakra color, you know, it's the Two of Cups. So if you know the chakra colors already, this is going to help you interpreting these cards. And I'll show you the knight because he's very cute. The knight of cups, the, all, the, all the royalty cards of the cups are otters. So, you know, the, the wands are, so that's actually something I should say in here. The wands in this deck are air and the swords are fire. So the, you know, the wands are birds and the cups are water, so they are otters. It's kind of nice that they're, uh, that they're not fish. <laughs> so often you see when cards are, you know, they do animals for um, the, the elements that cups are always fish, but you know, picking another water creature is a good thing to see. So, swords, you have this sword, the royalty cards and swords are these big cats. The king is this nice snow leopard. Pentacles are sand dollars, the shells. I'll show you the queen of pentacles here. The royalty cards in the pentacles are elephants. So it's a very cute deck. I think, you know, I'll go back to the Major Arcana to see, so like, you know, some of the cards that people consider the... Or I should say it is, this is a deck that strength is eight. It is this... Badger? I haven't looked up all the cards. So, and, um, and Justice is 11. So this is actually, actually... Justice is one of the uh, more gory cards in this deck, which is interesting because there's just heart weighed against a feather. And I'm gonna say I love the hangman here. Um, as you can see from, you know, my banner, <laughs> my YouTube banner, and from my background here, I love butterflies. I raise butterflies in the summer. I collect them as eggs off the milkweed plants and I raise them in a cage. If you go to my blog, I have a lot of photos of raising the, the butterflies, especially from a couple of years ago. I took a lot of photos my first year. And this is called the J position. And I love this for the hangman because when monarch caterpillars and maybe other caterpillars, but monarchs are the ones I'm familiar with and monarchs are the ones depicted in this photo here, in this illustration, um, when they have gotten to those as big as they're going to get as a caterpillar and then they are ready to form their cocoon they actually they hook their back feet um in, onto the branch and they hang in this j formation and they usually hang for about 24 hours they just hang there and then once they've kind of settled in the position is when they form the chrysalis and interesting fun fact, the chrysalis is not something that the caterpillar wraps around themselves. They actually, they shed their skin like a snake would shed its skin or, you know, like a, like a crustacean would shed its shell and then form a new one underneath. Um, caterpillars don't wrap a chrysalis around themselves. They form the chrysalis underneath their skin and then shed their skin. So, fun fact, if anyone is curious about butterflies, and like I said, I love butterflies, especially monarchs, because they're the ones that I collect in hand raise. Um, so, yeah, so death, not at all a scary card in this deck. It's just like a tunnel. Temperance is the butterfly emerged. The devil is a snake with an apple. So kind of an obvious biblical reference, but again, 
not a scary card. So if you're looking for a deck that you can, you know, this would probably be a really good deck for children. If, um, you know, if you have a, a child who wants their first deck, these are small, they'll fit in their hands, the tin will keep them protected. Um, and it's a very unassuming deck, but there's a really a lot of detail in them that um, that you can really learn to read the details, but you know, without any frightening images. The tower, it's you know, no no nobody's falling out of this tower, it's just, you know, a tip tilting tower. Yeah, so and even let's go to the miners, let's see the ten of swords here. Yeah, so the these since these are mostly just pip decks, you know, it's the ten of swords is ten of swords. So um if someone's looking for a really sweet and gentle deck, this is a really good option. I think this is be really good for kids, especially, you know, if they like this sort of aesthetic of this animals and cute things and not needing everything to be kind of graphic and sharp and bright colors. Um, so if they're into more of like the, the softer aesthetic, I think this would be really a good choice for a lot of kids learn, you know, for their first tarot deck. I know that comes up a lot in conversations. Like, I have, you know, a 10-year-old who wants their first tarot deck. What's a good option? This has no nudity. It has no violence. It has cute animals. <laughs> um, so I think that, um, I think this is probably a good choice. And like I said, and also it's small. Um, so let's see how it shuffles. I mean, it, it's a little stiff because it's a new deck, but it shuffles straight. It's small, so I can fit it in my hands and shuffle them like a normal deck of cards. I don't have to hold it sideways like with those larger decks. Yeah, I think that shuffles really well. And, and it fans smooth. Yeah, so I think that it's a very, it's a very workable deck. It won't show you the reversals from the backs, and it is a very sweet and soft deck. I really like this deck. I hope you do too. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. I do a new deck review every week, and um, I will see you around. Thank you.